Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Car Question. We're still continuing our most complete review about the Lincoln MKZ. And now it's time to compare cars in the same segment. We're starting with the Lexus ES350. You've got an hybrid version that it's also available, the 300H. You've got that classy interior, nice design. It's really well finished when you look at this car. You've got a smooth V6 engine and a good transmission, but it's not as powerful as the MKZ. Lexus has chosen not to use any turbo or supercharger, so when you're going to be accelerating, you will know it. On the other side, the car is extremely forgiving. The ride is smooth. You will have a road full of potholes and even the toughest one, and it will go on smoothly. And that's what we like in that segment, to have a smooth car. It's luxurious and well-built inside and outside. You've got also the generous leg room. It's probably one of the best in its class for the place in the rear. You've got also advanced electronic safety system, which come standard with this car, so no option is required. On the downside though, navigation system controller can be a little bit more complicated and distracting to use when you compare it to the MKZ that we have here. So no mouse, easy, tactile, fast responding screen, that's what we like. There's also a lack of feedback from the steering. So when you're gonna be on a, on a twisty road, you don't feel that as a wrench of the other car that you have in that segment. It's less challenging to drive, but if you prefer comfort rather than performance, think about this one. Also, if you face to face it with the Lincoln MKZ, well, it's not the same car. The MKZ is more powerful, more fun to drive and more communicative with its all wheel drive system. Another contender is the Acura TLX. This is the good choice. This is the sure value. This is the reliable car that you might want to go for. You've got also a quiet cabin interior at highway speed. Those wind noise, tire noise, you don't feel them. The rear seat legroom is also generous. Not the best, but generous. You've got also an, a big trunk space and in cabin storage also for small item, either a water bottle, either whatever you have in your pocket or just your phone. Everything is well placed and you've got a lot of compartment. It's typically priced also less than the German competitor, so this is a cool thing. On the downside though, acceleration are not that good. It's kind of sluggish when you compare it to the other in the class. Even compared to the Lexus, I think the Lexus is fastest than the Acura. It doesn't stop as quickly either. Brake feeling is not that good. The brakes are not that big when you compare it to the other cars. Real world fuel economy also is not as advertised. So what you look on paper, you might have a little bit of difficulty achieving it, but it still consumes less fuel than the Lincoln MKZ. The German contender is starting with the ODA4. The ODA4 has been fully redesigned for 2017. The highlights include an all new interior design, more horsepower and new technology and safety feature just like every car that has been redesigned for 2017. But a more fuel efficient but less powerful A4 Ultra model will also make its debut. So we can't wait to try this one. The cabin look has finally changed. It's been a long time since Audi was more conservative and the construction, the assembly is impeccable. You've got also a cutting edge safety and technology feature. The back seat is also spacious enough for adults, tall adults just like me. It's got also a new user-friendly interface. Back in the old days, it was kind of showing its time when you look at the interface. And you've got also a turbo charge engine that will provide quick acceleration. But when you're gonna go from a standstill, you still got those station, those acceleration lag coming out from the boost power and the transmission. So when you're in traffic and you, you move, you stop, you move, you stop, it will show a little bit more. Other journalists also reported that the car lacks feedback from steering and limits driving involvement. That's rare coming out from a Audi A4. I'm gonna ask to drive that model soon and give you a proper feedback about this one. You've got the BMW Series 3. We did a full review about this car, so you can check that also in our channel. Uh, you've got a hybrid version that is also available, so much like the Lincoln MKZ. The BMW is probably the most balanced with the good handling that you're gonna find out there. The ride quality won't beat you up, won't give you a pain in the back because it's the mix between full comfort and 
performance that is really acceptable for a car in this class. You've got many engine choice that offer a lot of power and whatever engine you will choose, you will get that smoothness acceleration, that smoothness in the change of the gear, but also fuel efficiency if you stay out of the full throttle a lot though. Upscale, spacious interior with logical and easy to use control, but still a little bit more conservative over the time when you check the BMW Series 3. On the downside though, the automatic start and stop uh, system is intrusive and when you go with the base model, let's say the 320i, you don't get a lot of equipment. You need to add some option and the price will go up fast. You, you have a wide range of price for, for that Series 3, so be careful on what option you want or what engine and how much powerful you want that Series 3. The last dream brand contender will be the Mercedes-Benz Class C. You've got the regular sedan version, you've got the coupe version, both are really nice. The interior is flawless, the crafting that they put into it, probably what gives us a strange feeling is the screen that pops out right there of the, of the instrument panel. So it's a love or hate thing, but there are plenty of uh, available cutting features that you can choose with that car. The exterior styling is really incredible. This is probably the most good looking car of the segment. When you look at it, everybody's turning their head, check the car go, and that tells me that it's a good looking car. On the other side, the standard sport suspension is a little bit too stiff. It's much less comfortable and you don't have any choice between a soft suspension or a sport suspension, depending on the option that you will choose once again. Uh, some features that are typically standard, just like a rear view camera, won't be available on that Mercedes-Benz. So the price will go up really fast once again if you choose some option. So that resumes a lot of cars that you will find in that segment. Now, what do you think about that? Which one do you prefer? Feel free to comment that in the section down there below. Also, don't forget to do a thumbs up if you like this one and subscribe right there in the corner because you will receive some alert that a new video from Car Question is available. See you another time on another video of Car Question.